Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So in the last video we took a look at Intel's Core i3-12100 and that little guy was so amazing you're actually able to get an average of over 120 FPS on the 1% lows in the games tested. And that is super impressive. So after seeing that, my buddy, he actually let me borrow his Ryzen 7 5800X while he's on vacation. And I was like, well, let's see how these compare. So that's what we're gonna be taking a look at here today. So we're gonna be taking a look at the Ryzen 7 3700X stock and overclocked next to the i3-12100 stock and memory overclocked compared to a fully tuned Ryzen 7 5800X and its stock performance. And before we get into it, I want to thank all of you guys. This video is sponsored by the good old gamer community. If you guys like projects like this and you want to help support further testing and see how all of these CPUs and in the future GPUs compare to one another. So this way we have a brand new database to go ahead and show stock performance and max tune performance. So this way you can make the most informed decision when buying your next CPU. Please consider becoming a member by clicking the join button down below or joining over on Patreon. Links are in the description below. Alrighty guys, so let's go ahead and just jump into this. So instead of drawing out all of the parts used, I'm just gonna go through it real quick. We all know what a Ryzen 7 5800X is. However, once fully tuned, I was able to get this all the way up to 4.7 gigahertz. We got the Infinity Fabric up to 2000 megahertz. So that is basically about as fast as Zen 3 can go or Veramir Zen 3 to be more specific. We're using DDR4 C16 at 4000 megahertz. That's using the Patriot Viper Samsung b die kit, which by the way, they are on sale click the link down below if you don't have one of these it's key to getting maximum performance out of your ddr4 system for ssd i'm using the kingston fury renegade pcie gen 4 nvme this thing's blazing fast for gpu we're using the evga rtx 3060 xc once again same settings that we've been using if you are interested in any of this stuff links are down below feel free to check those out i have memory timings and all that sort of stuff in there so you can get all the details now let's jump into the benchmarks all right because we do these alphabetically kicking things off with cyberpunk 2077 same settings that we've been using 1080p high dlss ultra performance all right so i'm not going to go through all of these numbers as these lists get bigger it would just take too much time. So we're going to take a look at the important ones. The i3-12100 CL14, that was the overclocked RAM, came in at 131 and 88 on the 1% low. The stock 5800X could not quite match that at 127 and 82. However, the overclock system was able to beat it at 133 average and 94 on that 1% low. So definitely a nice win for the Zen 3 CPU. Next up, Far Cry 5, 720p medium. We have the i3-12100 coming in at 183 on average and 137 on the 1% low. And the stock 5800X coming in at 162 and 123. So very similar to what we saw before with the overclock model coming in at 182 FPS on average and 139 on the 1% low. So in this particular game, this is basically a margin of error sort of thing. So the 12100 wins the average, but the 5800 100x wins the 1% low, but I would just chalk that up to margin of error. Next up, Horizon Zero Dawn, 720p medium. This does have DLSS, whoever commented that before. Uh, I did look into it, it's just weird where they put it in the settings, so I just missed over it. However, we're just gonna keep all the settings the same to keep testing, well, you know, even and fair. So anyways, checking out the i3-12100 overclocked, we have 186 on average and 125 on the 1% low. The stock 5800X comes in at 182 on average, 114 on the 1% low, and then we have the overclock model coming in at 188 and 119. So in this particular benchmark, the i3-12100 does come out ahead on that 1% low. Next up is StarCraft II at 1080p high, and this is really where Zen 3 shines. The Zen 3 is a monster on this one. Anyway, here's the i3-12100 coming in at 299 FPS on average and 211 on the 1% low. The stock 5800X comes in at 345 on average, which once again, that doesn't matter, but 223 on the 1% low, so that's a pretty big uplift and it bucks the trend that we've been seeing. Then the overclock model at 351 on average and 236 on the 1% low. I'm just gonna be honest with you guys, I've done more testing and Zen 3 and StarCraft 2 is a match made in heaven. I'm just letting you guys know that up front. This thing is a beast at this game. 
Next on the list is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p high DLSS ultra performance. The i3-12100 overclock coming in at 151 on average and 106 on the 1% low. The stock 5800X, a little bit faster on average at 158 and virtually tied at 107 on the 1% low. The 5800X overclock, however, pulls away at 162 FPS on average and 121 on the 1% low. So that's a significant uplift on that 1% low there. Now on to Watch Dogs Legion, we have 1080p high DLSS performance mode, and we have the i3-12100 overclock at 99 FPS on average and 78 on the 1% low. The stock 5800X coming in at 106 on average and 81 on the 1% low, taking the lead from the i3-12100. And then the overclock, coming in at 114 FPS on average and 87 on the 1% low. So we have a nice nice little stair step all the way on up, and Zen 3 does take the lead on this particular benchmark. And finally, we have the Witcher 3 720p medium. The overclocked i3-12100 comes in at 193 FPS on average and 147 on the 1% low. The stock 5800X at 209 FPS on average and 151 on the 1% low. This right here does take the lead, but still within the margin of error. However, once you overclock the 5800X, we get 234 on the average and then 169 on the 1% low, taking a commanding lead in the Witcher 3. All right, so checking out our seven game average here, we can take a look at all the numbers now because there's not so many of them. You have the stock 3700X with CL16 3200 memory coming in at 94 FPS on the 1% low. The overclocked at 4.5 and 3733 CL14 memory at 113 FPS on average. That basically ties the stock version of the i3-12100 at 114. And then the overclocked 12100 comes in at 127 FPS. And very similarly, the overclocked 12100 basically matches a stock 5800X with 3200 C16 memory, which let's be honest, that's the most common memory kit out there. However, if you do take the extra steps and tune your Zen 3 5800X or 5600X would be pretty similar, I would imagine, in these particular benchmarks, you can get up to 130 8 FPS on your 1% low, taking a commanding lead over all of the rest of the systems that we've tested so far. Compared to the overclock 12100, that's coming in at 9% higher. So that's a pretty good bump considering, well, the stock version is basically tied. So you're getting about an extra 10% performance by tuning your Zen 3 system. And next to my Godbin Max Overclock Zen 2 chip, we're getting 22% more frame rates with the Zen 3 chip. Now, this is basically what we expect from Zen 2 going to Zen 3. So when you tune both of them, you still get that 20 plus performance that AMD promised you. So I just wanted to show you that because, yep, they were pretty much dead on, weren't they? Well, already guys, there's a few different ways we can take a look at this. Number one, we're comparing a $330, $350 processor to a $100 processor. Yes, it's faster, um, but it takes overclocking and you're about 10% faster. In my eyes, this really shows how potent the i3-12100 really is. And that's why I wanted to put the Zen 3 chip in there. For about one third the cost, maybe a little bit less than that, you're getting 90% of the performance. So yeah, the Zen 3 chips are definitely going to be faster, especially in a game like StarCraft 2. That really does help extend its lead on those uh, compiled averages there. But yes, it is definitely the faster chip overall. But I'm still very impressed with the $99 CPU really hanging in there. Now, what's going to be more interesting is in the future, if I get enough support, if you guys like this type of testing, you want to see these type of things, I'm going to expand the roster. I've already started the benchmarking, and I'm using my buddy Austin, which with his 5800X, he's letting me borrow his RTX 3090. So we're doing the 3090 tests, but we're going up to 14 games. And that is making a pretty big difference. And we're going to be testing a lot more systems. If you guys like this kind of testing and you want the expanded testing with stock numbers versus maximum tuned numbers, well, maximum tuned for the chips that I have anyway, uh, I would like to pick up something like a Ryzen uh, 5600 instead and see how that compares. I would say it's probably going to be within 5% of the 5600, but if you do that, then it's only like, what, 4% faster than a 12100 for double the money. You see where we're going? But I'd like to test that. I'd like to test the i5-12400. 
I think that that would be very interesting. And then maybe go up to something like an i5 12600K again. Maybe I could borrow Paul's or, or whatever. I might be able to source one of those, but we'll see. I'm trying to keep it to the lowest possible price point with the maximum amount of FPS. However, in the next video, I'm going to revisit the i7 5960X. You guys do not want to miss that. The old eight core 16 thread Haswell based CPU that's 80 bucks today has a lot of life in it. And it's very, very shocking the performance level you can get when you completely tune that. So you do not want to miss that. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, hit the little notification bell. I'm going to try to get that one out on Wednesday. I think that's going to be the cadence one on Sunday, one on Wednesday. Techonomics podcast is also on Wednesday. So you can chat with me directly with the findings. I think it's just gonna blow your mind how potent those old HEDT Intel CPUs were because they have large L3 caches, which we're starting to get on modern CPUs. They have quad channel, which means even if they don't run at high frequencies, doesn't matter, it's freaking quad channel. So you got tons of memory bandwidth and you can get super low latencies. So I'm very excited for you guys to check that out. And yeah, I hope you guys do join the good old gamer family. I'd love to chat with you guys about this in Discord. I'm in there all the time and I just have a blast talking about this type of stuff with you guys. So I hope you enjoy it. That's really all I have for you guys here today. I look forward to catching you guys in the next video.